Emporia Shopping Center is located in the residential and business area in southwestern Malmo, Sweden's third biggest city. Emporia is spread across three floors with shops, restaurants, cafes, and a fourth-floor rooftop terrace. At 5.06 on Friday afternoon, August 19, 2022, a 31-year-old man, Shaheen, and some friends are on the second floor in the corridors outside the Nespresso and Echo stores when a lone, darkly dressed boy approaches Shaheen with determined steps and begins firing shots. Earlier in the day, Shaheen had attended a trial where three of his friends were charged with attempted murder in Bunkflo, accused of shooting from the car they were traveling in towards another car. Shaheen has a leading role within the criminal gang known as Satadara Assassins, belonging to the MC Club and criminal gang Satadara MC. Shaheen has been under police scrutiny for many years. In the years leading up to this summer day, he has played an increasingly prominent role in the criminal gang world and, according to the police, was part of the ongoing spiral of violence in Malmo. He has been detained for a total of over two years for various crimes. These include murder, extortion, incitement to public endangerment, and other serious offenses. In most cases, however, the police have had to drop suspicions and charges against him, and in other cases, the courts have either acquitted or mitigated the sentence for the crimes he was charged with. In the summer of 2021, the appeals court acquitted him of several crimes for which the district court had sentenced him to several years in prison. A few years before, Shaheen was summoned to a meeting with the police's stop shooting group because he was considered to belong to one of the most violent groups in the city. The National Operational Department of the Police, NOAA, has previously identified Shaheen as a person with a prominent criminal presence. According to them, he is part of a criminal family-based network. Shaheen has been living with a price on his head for some time. Back to August 19th and the day of the murder. The perpetrator and victim Shaheen were in the corridor in front of the Nespresso store when the perpetrator first fired five shots, three of which hit Shaheen in the back. They perforated his body and continued into the Nespresso store. Later, bullet holes from five gunshots would be located inside the Nespresso store. Complete chaos breaks out on the scene, and people panic, scream, and run. Freshly in the public's memory is events just a month earlier in July 2022, across the bridge over to Denmark and the capital city Copenhagen, when three people were shot dead, and four were seriously injured after a shooting at the field shopping center in Copenhagen. After Shaheen was hit by at least three bullets in front of Nespresso, he moved bleeding and running in the corridor towards the Zara store. As Shaheen, bleeding, moved, the perpetrator redirected the gun and fired a sixth shot, hitting the display window between Nespresso and Zara's entrance to the men's department. The bullet fragmented, and metal and bullet fragments spread in the corridor. Shaheen ran, and somewhere in front of Zara's entrance to the women's department, the perpetrator redirected the gun again and fired the seventh and final shot, hitting the victim, a shopper, a 39-year-old woman, in the back. The shot went through her and then hit Shaheen's right or left arm. The bullet went through again, and the bullet continued into Zara's women's department. After Shaheen passed the entrance to the women's department, just before the entrance to Lundberg's store, he collapsed to the floor. Shaheen had another through and through gunshot wound in one arm. Whether he was hit by a bullet in front of Nespresso or by the bullet that hit the display window cannot be determined. A passing 39-year-old woman, accompanied by her boyfriend and 9-year-old son, is in the wrong place at the wrong time. After the shot started, the target Shaheen runs in their direction and straight into them. The woman is hit by one shot in the back and is seriously injured but survives. The shooter runs from the crime scene and leaves the shopping center. Shaheen is lying still and you can see blood on the ground next to him. His clothes are also soaked. The men standing around the injured Shaheen are very hysterical and screaming. A man comes out from the Zara store and is shouting that a woman has been shot and is lying inside the store. A injured woman is lying outside the fitting room. The woman is lying face down and a man is applying pressure to her back with clothes. Around the lifeless Shaheen, one person who stands out and is hysterical is a woman who identifies herself as the injured man's sister. Another man on the scene is also very upset and seems to have been in close proximity to the crime. The witness remembers someone saying something like it was planned. It's no coincidence that he was shot. The witness doesn't remember who said it. The witness also heard a woman screaming but doesn't remember what the woman shouted. 
One minute after the shooting at the shopping center, the police were alerted, and a police patrol checks the cameras at Emporia. A suspect description emerges, and based on that information, a police officer spots a person matching the suspect description and follows him. The person walks toward a taxi, and the officer intervenes. The young man has a pistol in the waistband and is arrested on the spot. So just 20 minutes after the brutal and ruthless shooting in a shopping center, a suspected perpetrator has been apprehended. The suspect matches the image from the surveillance cameras and emporia of the shooter. The taxi is ordered from the same phone that the suspect has on him. The taxi order is supposed to go to Nora Grange Bergskitten 35. The police go to the address, and after a while, three people come down to a car carrying two bags. They check the people in the car and find 28 kilograms of explosives, one automatic rifle, and a quantity of ammunition. Three people are arrested, and a search is conducted at the apartment they came from. The arrested perpetrator, the shooter, turns out to be a 15-year-old boy from Sweden's second biggest city, Gothenburg. The 15-year-old boy is on the run from a youth facility. When he was arrested, he was armed with a CZ brand pistol and caliber 9mm that can hold up to 15 shots in the magazine. It later turns out that the shooter fired 7 shots in the shopping center and Shaheen succumbs to his gunshot wounds at the crime scene and it is determined that he was shot with at least 5 shots. The gunshot wounds are consistent with the deceased leaning forward and slightly to the side while being hit by the 3 shots, probably because Shaheen was sitting on a bench talking to his friends and was first shot from behind by the shooter. He was shot 3 times on the left side of the back, which were fatal. In the corridor, between ECCO and Nespresso, 7 empty shells were found. After the murder and in subsequent interrogations, the arrested and detained 15-year-old admits to being the shooter and confesses to the murder and attempted murders. The boy is considered a hired hitman. The boy did not know or have any connection to the deceased victim Shaheen. The boy has now turned 16 and was prosecuted almost a year later for murder and three attempted murders, aggravated weapon offenses, and causing danger to others. The 16-year-old has previously been suspected of serious crimes. In 2021, the administrative court decided that the then 14-year-old boy should be placed in compulsory care. He had run away from home several times. School, health care, and the police had repeatedly reported concerns about his situation. According to the school, he had been violent towards children and adults on several occasions. He had been hospitalized for drug use. According to a psychiatrist, he had experienced a drug-induced psychosis. After the shooting, an additional seven people are detained for complicity in the murder of gang leader Shaheen. According to the prosecutor, pointing to an internal conflict within a group of men in Malmo, seven people were pulling the strings and assisting when a 15-year-old boy shot and killed Shaheen at Emporia. The now 16-year-old boy who committed the act has already been sentenced to four years in closed youth care for murdering Shaheen, the gang leader of Satadara Assassins. Five men and two women was later charged with involvement in the murder. Two of the accused are suspected of instigating the murder, and five are suspected of assisting. After the murder, the boy tried to leave Emporia by taxi, but he was arrested by an undercover police officer. The address the boy had intended to go to was under police surveillance, and later, the two women who are now charged arrived. These women, in turn, were found to be in contact with one of the men accused of instigation of the murder. The police and prosecutor received assistance from information gathered through surveillance and secret wiretapping already ongoing due to another criminal investigation. The investigation revealed that the then 15-year-old boy had run away from the youth care facility where he met a person in contact with the two now accused of instigating Shaheen's murder. The prosecutor claims that the seven individuals persuaded the boy to commit the murder and provided him with weapons, ammunition, and accommodation. One of those accused of instigating the murder was a very close friend of the victim, Shaheen. Now, 27-year-old Saad is on trial for ordering the gang leader's murder. Saad claims he is innocent and that he himself was close to being injured in the shooting at Emporia. Saad and Shaheen had been friends for many years. Both were members of the criminal network Satadara Assassins, with Shaheen as president and Saad in a lower position. Saad and 20-year-old Ahmad, incidentally the younger brother of another Satadara member, who was accused of ordering the murder, were said to have been close to Shaheen. An internal conflict in the criminal gang could be a possible motive. They were sick of his ruthless leadership. 
Shaheen's murder was planned for months. The main goal was to find a shooter. In the middle of summer, the conspirators found a suitable candidate, a 15-year-old boy on the run. The Emporia murderer was caught on the police surveillance images while the gang members groomed him to be a killer slowly with drugs, clothes, and a roof over his head. When the 15-year-old boy entered the Emporia shopping center in Malmo armed with a gun, everything was carefully planned. He had been told whom to shoot, given a gun, and provided with sedatives to ensure that he mentally could commit the murder. Saad and Ahmad are said to have recruited the then 15-year-old shooter and housed him in an apartment. Then, they are suspected of handing over the rest of the plan to three other men and two women. They are charged with aiding and abetting murder, as, according to the prosecutor, they knew that the 15-year-old would commit murder, knew who the intended victim was, and in various ways assisted him. They all are suspected of promoting the crime by ensuring that the 15-year-old had access to a mobile phone, housing, food, money, clothes, and narcotics. They also provided him with a murder weapon, a pistol, and made sure he took sedatives before the act. One of the accused was the one who then accompanied the boy to Emporia when Shaheen was to be shot. He acted as a guide for the shooter at the shopping center. The trial is still ongoing, so stay tuned and subscribe to the channel for updates and other content.